Hey guys, Ego here. Today we're going to be talking about springs. Um, now springs, you may have heard about these. There's a recent update that's actually talking, or not talking, it has added in new spring constraints. And you might be confusing what I'm about to talk uh, about for that. And they're not the same thing. So I do want to clear that up in terms of the applications, applications uh, for springs. Uh, specifically, the springs that I'm talking about today. Applications for springs. Um, so as I said, the new system might not necessarily work for the type of thing that we want to do. So the type of springs that we're going to be handling um, aren't necessary or are pretty well integrated into most things that the new system, which are actual physical object type things, uh, aren't. So one great example is phantom forces. Uh, they use springs to emulate like realistic movement when the uh, character kind of is spinning around. So if I have my character here and let's say that's just my arm pointing at something, when I spin it, it's going to point in this direction, but it's also probably going to be a little off, just like in human motion. We don't necessarily move our hands perfectly where they need to be the first time. We have to slightly adjust them backwards because we overshoot it often. Um, so that's basically what they use springs for. And that's a great reason because it creates like this realistic, realistic looking movement. Movement. Now, obviously, you can use springs for a whole bunch of things, but I think Phantom Forces is a great highlight of a good use. So the way that we're going to do this, uh, the way that we are going to actually make our spring is to use something called Hook's Law. And there is an E at the end there, so I'm not sure if it's hooky or hooks, but I'm going to assume it's hooks uh, law. And this was discovered by Robert Hook, and I can't remember the date off the top of my head. Uh, but basically, it's a very simple equation, which we're going to talk about in a second. Um, and what it basically does is it's used to calculate the force um, applied on something that's attached to a spring. So if we have a spring, you know, a start point or a fixed point here, let's say it's a fixed point, um, or a target, right, and some free moving point, free point, right, and then we have, you know, the spring in between these two points, those are my stupid bad drawing coils, right, this free point is going to bounce all around, you know, it might go up here, it might go down here, whatever, but it's eventually going to come down to this fixed point. Um, that's just how springs work, think like a slinky. Um, so it's used, what Hooke's Law is used for is to calculate the force that we apply um, to this free point based on the distance between the two points and a constant. We're going to talk about specifically what these are. So the equation is F, which is force, is equal to k times x. Now k, k here, is equal to some constant, as I mentioned earlier. And we'll talk a little bit about what we want to set that constant to later. And x is equal to the distance between the two points. Now, distance implies like a length, but that's not necessarily the case, especially for our purposes. If we're working with vectors, we don't necessarily want the distance, we actually want the vector subtraction. And the reason we want the vector subtraction is because it retains retains direction. And that being said, we can use Hooke's Law, or the form that I'm going to be showing you anyway in terms of code uh, usage, on anything that we can scale. So we can scale vectors pretty easily with a scalar, DOI. So vector 2, vector 3, and of course normal numbers or if you prefer to call them, we can scale scalars by scalars. Sirs. Does that work? Yeah, we could scale scalars with scalars. And that's a bit of a tongue t twister, but that's why I prefer to say we can scale number with scalars, um, or numbers with scalars. So, as I said though, if we're using uh, vectors, we want to just use normal vector subtractions. We don't want magnitude because we want to retain the direction, because we're of course going to be moving this. We want to actually emulate the point moving, this free point moving. We don't just care about the actual distance between these two points um, because we're working in multiple dimensions. Right, so 
one thing we can say for sure, 100%, just looking at this, sorry, this back up here to this equation, is that if x is our distance or our difference between the vectors, we know 100% that k, this constant, is going to scale our vector down. We can treat k as essentially a percentage. Um, and as such, we know that our k value is going to be between 0 and 1. Right? So, and we think about that. If we multiply 1 here by x, we're just going to get the distance. If we multiply it by 0, we're going to get absolutely no force. If we multiply it by 0.5, we're going to get about half the distance. So what k really is here is it's kind of, I don't want to say analogous to how intense the force is, because as we'll see a bit later, it's actually more or less, I would say, more analogous to the speed at which these vector or this force changes. Um, so for now, and I'm just flipping my page here because I've written some notes down, um, we're going to actually just do a simple kind of run through here so that we can get a good idea of what this actually looks like, what this process looks like, because I think that's going to help us. So let's say we have our start position here, our free position. This is going to be our free position. We'll just call it P, though. And we have another position here, which we'll call T, and that's our target position. And so we can easily, easily get the uh, vector between these two here, which I'll do my best to draw, right? That's just T minus P in vector form. Or, but if it's numbers, of course, this equation also still works. So that's t minus p. And let's assume k, for our purposes, is 0 0.3. So it's about 30%. So we're going to do our first iteration here, and that's going to give us about multiplying 0 0.3 by t minus p. That's going to give us about 30% of this line. Let's say that's eyeballing it, but let's say that's 30% of this line. So we're going to get return some force vector that goes to about here. And that's all great and dandy. We're going to take this vector here and we're going to add it to our previous uh, velocity. And the reason we're going to do that is because this force vector is essentially acceleration. Force returned, or uh, returned here, returned is acceleration. And acceleration uh, is the rate of change of our velocity. Right, so we're just adding the change rate to our velocity. So we have this and our, you know, we're starting here. This is our start position, so we haven't moved at all. So our velocity is zero. Uh, but our, we're going to be then ended up at this point because this uh, is our acceleration, but also our velocity in this particular case. But keep this this uh, in mind because we're going to be adding to it later because that's now our, our velocity at this point. So let's do our next iteration here. So once again, we've got these two points. We've got the position that we're currently at, that's, we'll call it n, right? So we're at n, we'll call it n1, sorry. So we're at n1 here, right? Um, and we, we, once again, well, I guess we can rather do it this way. We have the distance between these two, right? You can take 30% of that. Let's say that's about 30%. That's probably way more than 30, though. Uh, that's too short. About 30%. I don't know, once again, eyeballing it here, right? We're taking 30% of this vector. And we're left with another one here. And this, you'll notice, this one here is slightly shorter than the one up above here. So uh, what we can actually say from this is that the, uh, the, the actual velocity, the velocity is continuing to go up. Velocity is going up. But the acceleration, the acceleration is going down. Um, so we're, we are continuing to speed up, but we're speeding up at a slower pace, if that makes any sense. I mean, this is basic physics stuff, right? If you know your velocity and acceleration, this will make perfect sense to you. But if you don't, I'm trying my best to give you a little rundown because this isn't a particularly hard subject. So I think most people can do springs. Right, so we have this. And then one might think, one might think, and I'm going to change the color specifically to correlate that it's a bad decision, that our next position is here. But that's not the case. Because once again, this is our rate of change, right? Oops, that looks like a PU. Rate of change on our velocity. It's not the actual velocity itself. It's the rate of change of velocity. So we want to take the previous velocity, which is up here, and add our rate of change to it. So what are we doing? Well, we're taking this. So I'm going to eyeball how long that vector was, right? I'm going to say it's about that length. And then we're going to add this one tail to tip here, which is going to give us, let's say, some point. 
uh, let's just for the sake of argument say it's a little over um, or let's actually extend it let's say it's a little further I know this isn't what the actual vector is but let's say we are in a situation where we are put over which is where we'd inevitably inevitably get we'd overshoot our vector so we'd go too far so what we'd realistically get from this is we're going to get some position about here and once again we're going to take 30 percent of that sorry i'm just doing this all just to avoid confusion we're going to get 30 percent add that then we're going to take tail here add it to here all the way and it's going to give us some far vector like all the way out here or something right so let's say we do have this vector well now we're doing the subtraction again t minus p minus p over here and that's going to give us some vector like this right and once again we do our 30 percent add it we might still go a little further in this direction but we're slow you know we're slowing down and eventually we're going to you know this process is going to repeat multiple cycles but we're eventually going to converge in on this point here in the center so we might head back somewhere into this area somewhere out here whatever but we're eventually going to get back into here and that's what kind of gives us our springy motion so the reason though that i wanted to kind of hold off on k is because now we can see once we've played around with k here in that 30 percent it's more or less um, analogous as i mentioned before analogous i hope i'm spelling that right to uh, speed in some sense uh, because if we have a higher value right if we set k to one then we're obviously going to just multiply this t times p right times one and we're just going to get straight to t right we're done we, we're not having to spring anything from there that's the quickest possible way it could be whereas if it's 0 0.9 we're going to be very close and of course it's going to keep going back and forth a little bit there it's going to spring uh, definitely pretty hard but it's still going to reach its target quite quickly relatively speaking um, now that sounds all good and dandy in the real world uh, however this isn't the real world right there's still some things that we haven't taken into account and that is mainly in the form of uh, things like air resistance uh, resistance I'm a terrible speller resistance uh, you know drag it's kind of the same thing but anything any physical force um, friction right that affects our uh, thing that's connected to our spring right and that would also slow us down so we can just add another constant here which uh, I'll just call friction in the code friction um, which we're just going to multiply this by the uh, velocity which will of course slow it down and that will give us a good looking spring so let's hop into studio and check everything out I know it seems like this was probably much simpler than you thought so let's check it out and uh, try this out and see how it looks okay so we're now in studio and a few things I want to take a look at first the spring module it's very simple right we're creating a spring class here we have to give it a position of velocity and target and no they're not preset because as I said earlier we can use vector 2 we can use vector 3 or we can use straight up numbers so because that's the case obviously I don't want to lock the spring into anything specifically so I just require that we set these things so obviously the position is going to be that free point the target is where we want to go and velocity is going to essentially be empty except of course we need to know the value type and that's why it's included in here so it's going to be just like vector 3.new with 0 0 0 or vector 2 or 0 whatever um, the important values that we really care about are k and friction right so k i've got stuck to one so that's once again speed it's going to be perfectly like on the ball like going to hit it uh perfectly uh, i guess i'm that yeah. the spring is not going to look very springish is i guess what i'm trying to say because it's going to be instant friction not really going to apply too much in this case because it's instant but we'll see what friction kind of does in a second that's kind of analogous to dampening i know i've been throwing a word around the word analogous not a lot and you might not know what it means so do <laughs> check that out google definitions please it kind of means similar ish um, then we've got the update uh, method so what we're doing here, once again, we're taking the distance between those two, right? Uh, then we're going to take, whether they be vectors or scalars, obviously it's just subtraction that's going to work. We're multiplying that by that constant, right? This is going to give us F or slash acceleration. We're going to add that into our velocity, which is uh, the velocity is being multiplied by our friction value. 
and then we're finally updating our position. And of course, we can then, you know, use those values to just update the part C frame or whatever, which is what we're doing here in the local script. So right, we're creating a part, getting the mouse, making sure it's not intersecting with the part or gonna read the part position. Creating the spring module, creating a new spring, we're starting at the parts position. Uh, target is always gonna be the mouse mouse's position. And once again, I said velocity is zero from the get-go. So we're just updating the target here, then we're updating the values every time the frame is updated and we're updating the C frame. Now, once again, what's important to note, K is one, so this is gonna be instant. So I'm gonna press play, but it's not gonna look like anything special right now, right? The part is just gonna follow my mouse one to one. Uh, what's gonna start to look a little more interesting is when I start to uh, change K. So we've got K at a very low value now. Um, friction is still at one, so friction, as I said, is kinda like dampening, so it's gonna come in very slowly. It's not gonna bounce around a lot because friction is one, but it is gonna come in very slowly because K, if you recall, is analogous kinda to speed. So, oops. So yeah, as you can see, I move my mouse around, it's trying to follow after it, but it's not quite fast enough to get there. And uh, that's what that looks like. So let's go ahead and do it now with a low friction and a low K, just so we can see everything. And this is probably what you want it, you want kind of. Now you obviously want to play around with the values, but this is kind of the spring you're probably thinking of. It bounces really when it gets there, right? So we move our mouse around and it's really bouncing around. So you can play around with the values. Obviously you might not want it to be this intense a spring, but if you play around with K and, and friction, you're going to get a, a nice spring uh, that you probably want to work with. So uh, that's all I have to show you guys then today. Of course, as I normally do, I will provide a link to this place that you're actually viewing right now and uh, you can play around with it yourself although this one is a couple lines of code so it's not like I'm doing your super huge favor but uh, do enjoy this and uh, leave me some feedback in the comments if you enjoyed the video thanks